and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got a debut on the channel for you, this time from Viderino, uh, and a puzzle called Uniquely Paired Dots. And the testers tell me that this one is, is, is not genuinely approachable, but it is approachable. So if you are new to Variant Sudoku, this might be the time to risk cutting your teeth on a puzzle and, and having a go at this one. You may surprise yourself and get through it. Um, I'm going to have a go at this in a moment or two, and I don't have much news today. The news I do have is that it's the 20th of June, and that means that we, well, it's the closing date for our planet's um, Sudoku hunt, which we've obviously been talking about a lot over the last few weeks. It is it's going down a storm and we've absolutely loved the facts that you've been sharing with us with a lot of your entries. So we asked you to come up with facts um, and actually I've learned the difference between a fact and a factoid. I should not have been referring to factoid in pre previous videos because a factoid, I'm reliably informed, is something that is uh, sounds like it might be true because it's repeated so many times, but is in fact not true. And that's very different from a fact. Um, so, no, I'm going to share with you a fact today. Uh, this The fact of the day is from Graham Nicholson, and it's about Earth this time. And um, it's, it's this fact, which is that because the, the Earth bulges around the equator due to centrifugal force, um, the furthest point from the center of the Earth uh, is not Mount Everest, as you might expect it to be, but Mount Chimborazo, uh, which is in Ecuador. Uh, so apparently, although Mount Everest is 29,000 feet above global mean sea level, Mount Chimborazo uh, is only 20,000 feet above sea level, but the bulge means that the summit of Mount Chimborazo is actually 6,800 feet further from the center of the Earth than the top of Mount Everest. And if you knew that already, very well played. If you didn't, I hope you I hope you agree. That's an interesting fact. That is not a factoid. And thank you to Graham for that. I thought that was very interesting indeed. Yeah, you don't want to talk to me at parties. Well, me and Graham have a great conversation. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, steer clear. Um, anyway, with that said and done, um, do join us on Patreon if you have any interest in such matters. Um, it is the best Sudoku club on earth, I promise. And uh, with that said and done, let's have a look at uniquely paired dots and see what Viderino has constructed for us. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply, so we've got to put the digits one to nine in each row, in each column, and in each three by three box once each. Um, digits separated by a white dot are consecutive, so those two cells have to contain consecutive digits. So if this was a five, that could be a six or a four. That's how white dots work. Uh, digits separated by a black dot have a ratio of one to two. Now that's a posh way of saying that one of the digits is double the other. So if this square here was a four, this square here could be a two or an eight. What you couldn't do is put a five here because this couldn't be two and a half or ten. So one of the digits needs to be double the other on a black dot. Now this is an intriguing part of the rules. Digits separated by a green dot differ by at least five. I think that means that these are sort of, this is another way of representing a German whisper. So if this digit here was a, I don't know, uh, let's pick two. Um, this digit here would have to be at least five different from two. So it would have to be seven, eight or nine is how uh, I think that the green dots work. And a pair of digits can only appear once for each dot color. E.g. there can only exist one one two pair with a white dot in between, but there can exist a one-two pair with a black dot in addition, since it's a different dot color. That's fascinating. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's as it sounds, isn't it? So if we put one-two on this, on these dots here, we couldn't have we couldn't have one two there because that would be repeating a white dot one two pair, but we could have one two there, um, which is just putting one and two on a black dot because the, what we've put on a white dot doesn't affect what we're allowed to put on a black dot. I think that's all the rules. Let me just check there's no scrolling. No scrolling there. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And actually, you know what? As I was doing the... Um, 
As I was doing that example there with the one two, I noticed that there are four black dots in this puzzle. And that is the complete panoply, the complete gamut, the complete ambit, the complete collection of possible black dot pairs, I think. Because if you think about digits that can be uh, in a one to two ratio that are Sudoku digits, you've got one, two, you've got two, four, you've got three, six, and you've got four, eight, and that's all of them. So these black dots must be a set of those pairs. Right. And I'm now right. Actually, this is far more interesting than that even, which is in and of itself interesting. Yeah, I've made the party joke. I'm not making it again. But look, there are eight white dots in this puzzle. And that's interesting. If you imagine the digits one to nine, and you imagine a little connection between each pair of consecutive digits, you would find eight connections. There are eight connections between the digits one to nine, one to two, two to three, etc., etc. So the whole panoply of white dot digits is given as well. I'm pretty sure the whole panoply of green dot digits is not given because I think there are loads of those. Um, but the other, the other thing that I mentioned, just as it's occurring to me, is that that collection of digits, let me just highlight those for a moment, they look like that's just a rotation of that, isn't it? I think that's the, exactly the same constraint, just rotated around 90 degrees. It's got this, you know, it's got this black dot here, that's the equivalent of that. Three white dots, that's the equivalent of that. And then this sort of run of green dots. So, I don't know what that means, but this, this little congregation and this little congregation appear to be the most dotty combinations of digit, of sort of cells that are close to each other. So, this is probably where I'm going to start. And my temptation actually is to look at the green dots first because there are some secrets about green dots um, because they, they transpose over from German whispers, don't they? Green dots can't have five on them because if you put a five on a green dot, how do you make the next digit work? It's got to be at least five different from five. If you go up, you get to 10. If you go down, you get to zero. And anything more extreme than those digits is simply so ridiculous. We needn't worry about it. So. So this means we get oscillating polarity, by which I mean whatever this digit is, we could describe it as either being lower than 5 or higher than 5. And if it's, for example, if it's lower than 5, these two digits would then both have to be higher than 5. And similarly, if this is higher than 5, these would both have to be lower than 5. Now... Okay, so the more, right, the problem with black dots is that low digits can always go on black dots. So I'm tempted to look at this the other way around. If we put one, two, three, four here, and six, seven, eight, nine here, I can immediately restrict this cell because this cannot be seven or nine. That is not a valid black dot digit. If you try seven, you've got to go three and a half or 14. If you try nine, you've got to go four and a half or 18. So this would then be even. No, it wouldn't. That's not true. It would be three or four. Oh, well, hang on. That's just wrong. <laughs> okay, let's not worry about parity. Let's just worry about quantum. Right, so if this is a high digit, because it has to be a six or an eight, this square, in order to be a valid black dot combination, would be three or four, and they, that is three or four are not consecutive with six, seven, eight, or nine. That's great. Right, okay, so now we've learnt that these two squares are the low digits, and this is the high digit, uh, which... Ah, yeah, okay. But, but now I can, I can use the fact that I can't repeat digits on green dots. If this was a six, both of these squares would have to be a one and there would be two six one dominoes, which is not allowed. So that's not six. So it's at least seven. Uh, oh no. Uh, okay. No, so we, I can't actually. No, I, I can't rule out anything, in fact, from these two squares, can I? Well, okay, no, I, I could, 
I can't, I don't think, but what I can do is... Right, I can... I can get the parity of this digit. No, I can't. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, I think I can, actually. I think I can, because... What, what odd digits can we put on a black dot? And there are only two, and they're one and three. Now, I cannot put one here because it's in the middle of a sequence of consecutive digits. So if I put one here, I have to put two on both sides of it to be consecutive with one, and that's not going to work. And I can't put three here because this can't be six. So that's huge. Well, when I say huge, I mean, it, it is interesting because that means this is an even digit. So it's two, four, six, or eight, but it's got to be consecutive with this, which means it's not six or eight. And, and because this is even, what do you get on a consecutive pair of dots? You must have an even and an odd digit. So this square has to be an odd, an odd digit and that square has to be an odd digit. And this can't be three because this can't be six, that's lovely. This is really interesting, actually. It's surprisingly constrained. Um, right, and the other thing I'm noticing here is that this domino now always has a two on it because, well, try you can't put one four in, in here. One and four are not in a one to two ratio with each other. Uh, okay. Now, is it legitimate then to just copy these pencil? Oh, hang on. If it was legitimate, we're away here. Oh, that would be sick. Because what I'm thinking is if I can just copy these pencil marks suitably rotated onto the this P pentomino here, I get a two here and that's going to clarify which of these is two that's going to do massive work right so is it the same if you put if we make these the high digits on the, on the sort of tentative green uh, whisper line here if these were both high uh, how does that work this has to be a three or a four and that sec that sequence doesn't work it's the same it's the same so we can copy these across so this is seven eight nine um, this one the top one is one three that's one, two, or four. That's two or four. That's one, three, or five. But look, exactly the same. We've got a two, a two thing here looking at this square, which now cannot be two, which means this square is two, which means this is a one, three pair on the either side of the two. And now the, <laughs> now this square is a five by this power of Sudoku, and five is consecutive with four, is consecutive with three, this is a, this is a, oh, no, nearly. That's a, uh, a green relationship. So this can't be seven because seven and three are only four apart. Uh, this has to be two because we know there was a two on this black dot. Uh, no, that doesn't do it. Um, now, what does that do? Come on with it. We're close, I think, to having a bit of a, an idea here this is one or four if it's one that could be nine or well or seven is probably more in the point oh there's no hang on there's a four looking at it so if that's one that puts no pressure on this digit can be now now be seven eight or nine with impunity we found ah now hang on hang on hang on we found a one two pair and a two four pair so these squares we know are three six and four eight in some order and because, because we have to have the whole set of black dot digits. Ah, bobbins, that doesn't that doesn't do our work for us, does it? Um, what do we do now then? What else have we definitely had? Yeah, okay, we've had that can't be a three. Because if that, and similarly, that can't be a three. Because if this was a three, 
it would be surrounded by a 2-4 pair, wouldn't it? So, and 3-4 has gone, and 2-3 has gone. So that definitely cannot be a 3, and that definitely can't be a 3, which means this can't be a 6, and that can't be a 6. Right, now, now these are both even, so these are all odd, and they are from 3, 5, 7, and 9, I think. Whoopsie. Um... But we, hang on, we can't have 3, 4, can we? Because 3, 4 has gone. Right, sorry, so we can get rid of 3s from both sides of this. So now we can't have 4 here, because we would need a 3, 4 pair. Sorry, I'm doing this very slowly, but I think we are getting somewhere. So now I've got a 6, 8 pair here, which means these must be the low digits. So these are a 3, 4 pair. And, okay, this this one can't be five. Oh, 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 broke. No, that's fine. Hang on. I was just suddenly thinking I couldn't put these digits on a green dot, but I was getting confused. That's fine. Five can't go on a green dot. That's certainly true. Right, so this square is quite high. So this square can't be nine now. Oh, no, it can. Nine, eight, sorry. No, I'm just talking absolute rubbish. Um, oh, I see. Look, 5 here means I've got a 7-9 pair in this box. So that has become a 5, which means that's 6 and that's 7. And that's beautiful. So this is a 1 or a 2 in order to be 5 different from 7. This is 3. So this is 4. This is 8. This is 9. This is 7. I don't believe it. Um, good grief right so now now this is eight by sudoku because eight's got to go in one of those squares in box five um okay does that does that do anything else you see what we get we are always going to need an aid memoir here for what we've used we've well what we've used is certainly in terms of green dots Uh, okay. How could that be seven now? If that's a seven, this can't be a two. So you'd have to put seven one on both dominoes and that's going to create two of the same domino. So this is eight or nine, which is similar to this one. Yeah, ah, ah, yeah, I, I understand, I understand, oh my goodness, this is, e it's easy, but it's, it's sort of not easy at the same time, um, this has to be a not a one, doesn't it, because if it's a one, whatever I put here creates the same dollar, that's really clever, it, that's really clever, look, this is doing work, now we've got loads of stuff, we've got a, oh no, it doesn't fix this, right, now, now I know these are different, I'm going to I'm definitely keeping track of that. Um, and I know these are different because there's a three pair with this one. And there's a three pair with this one. So if these were the same digit, we'd have the same domino on a green dot. Um, right. Now, what are these digits now? One, nine and six. Um, these squares are constrained. They're one, seven and nine by Sudoku. And that's not one. So these squares are two, six, and five. Two, five, and six. So we've still got to put three and four into this row. Bobbins, that's not resolved. Um, oh, okay. Uh, now I'm struggling. Hang on. Um, two. Two goes down at the bottom of the grid by Sudoku. Right, so that's not a seven because that would repeat that one. Oh, and it's not whatever this is because that would repeat blue. It can't be two six. Right, so this is, I think this digit's yellow, I think. Um, 
let me just let me just check that I agree with my logic there. This this has to be a high digit. It can't be six because it's only four apart. It can't be blue because it would repeat the two blue pair. So it must be this digit, which is the only other high digit it can be. Now, hmm, now that doesn't quite do it, does it? One seven nine. One, I suppose, is in one of those squares. We might as well take advantage of everything that we can we can do here. Ah, I am now starting to wonder whether I was wrong in my initial assumption about how many how many green dot digits are there? Because six can only partner with one, so that's one domino. Seven can partner with one and two, so that's three altogether. It's triangular, isn't it? So it's 10. So 8 can partner with 1, 2, and 3, and 9 can partner with 1, 2, 3, and 4. Right, so it's 10. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, Bobby, it was, it was, I, I didn't realise this. So the green, there is a complete set of green digits. Oh, that's very clever. I really, I love this puzzle. Because it is, it is doable, but it is beautiful as well. It's got some really unusual logic in it. Um, right, so what, what do I learn from that? So there has to be a 6-1 green dot in this puzzle. Well, it's not there. Oh, it could be there. Oh, no, okay, that could go a few places, actually. In fact, that's probably the worst idea. I could probably have had. There has to be a low digit on this that's not one or three. Um, now, if it's four, it would have to be four, nine. And that would make this an eight. And it would make this a nine. If it's two, Couldn't be. Bleh. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, my goodness me. Right. We have to think about what the low digit is on this domino because, in theory, it's two or four because it can't be one or three by Sudoku. But imagine it was two for a moment. Right. Well, it, we can't partner two with six and we can't partner two with seven because that's already appeared. So we've got to partner two with either this digit or this digit. But the two blue combination has gone. So the only digit left is yellow. But if I partner yellow up here, there's two yellows in box one, which doesn't work. So there is no two on that green dot, which means there is a four on it, which means it's four nine. And if it's four nine, that is eight. And therefore blue, so that's eight, that's nine. Um, I don't know what that's done. I'm sure it's done a lot. Well, nine. Okay, so the only thing we're left right. I'm going to keep a tab of what we're left with. The nine digit we've not found is nine one, because we've found nine two, nine three, and nine four. The eight digit we've not found is probably nothing actually. Eight one eight two and eight three have all gone. So it's there's no eight digit to find. Seven two has gone. So one seven. Is still alive unless I can find it now. Oh, hang on. Have I? Okay, seven, seven, one, one, six. I can see hasn't gone. I've got one, two, three left. So that's those three, is it? It seems to be. Okay, well this can't be one seven because there's a seven in the column. So there's, there's so this is either one six or one nine. So there's definitely a one on here. One six nine. Oh, right. So that this, so this square is not one six or nine. So there's a one six nine triple we've just found in this column. So this is either one six or one nine. So the oh, this isn't one nine. Look. So this is either one six or one. Oh, here we go. This is either one six or one seven. But the six or the seven has to be there. So that means this has to be one and it's using up one of those two, but we don't know which one. I'm going to get some weird pencil marks here. I'm just going to highlight those up there to, to remind me that I'm not allowed to do Sudoku with them. Um, 
Okay. What about this column? Three, four, eight. Three. I can place it. Yeah! Bobbins. That's a three. That's a four. That's a three. This is a four, eight pair. We can do it. Four and eight just go into the grid. Easy as pie. Eight's not peered in this box. I was about to put five in there. That would not be a good idea. There's a six here. There's a six here. Right, these squares are five, seven, and nine, which we might be able to do something with. That's not nine. These squares are one and three, which we can do something with. This is going, is it going? I could get a three in the corner. No, I can't get a three in the corner because all the threes have gone. Um, oh, well, never mind. What about, right, what about this green dot? This, oh, look, yeah, here we go. This green dot can't have nine on it. So the only one of the green dots that can have a nine on it that's left is this one. So that is a one nine pair, which makes this a six. Let's get rid of the pencil marks. This one is one six or one seven, depending on what this one is. It's definitely got one on it. So that's not a one. So that's a one by Sudoku. Oh, the nine is doing work. Sorry, there's, more, there's some Sudoku to do. That won't surprise anybody. So that's nine. That's, oh, here we go. That's nine. That's seven, which means this is one six, which means that's one seven. There we go. Um, making a bit of a mess of my pencil marking. But OK, so we've got these now. We can delete all those. Let's delete the color. Let's put one into one of these three squares. Let's pencil mark these squares as two, uh, six and two. In fact, we can do them. Um, now, how does that help? That means that's not six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. So this is four or five. This is four or seven. Hmm. Not sure, actually. Let's do these. These are four, seven, and nine. Okay, that's probably not a sensible thing to have done, actually. What about... Where does four go? Four has to go there by Sudoku. So this is seven. Right, these two squares over here are now five and eight, which are not resolved. Okay, what else do we need in this box? We need two, four, six, and seven. So the six is down here, the seven is down here. Ah, it's not quite doing it, is it? And the, okay, this is four, seven. This is a four, seven pair by Sudoku. So this must be a two, six pair. So two goes here. And these squares are five and something, four. That's doable. So this column, this is a one or a nine at the top, but it's not resolved yet. It's just going to be, I think it's just going to be Sudoku. That's not a one because of the one nine pair here. Three, five, eight. So this is three or five. This is three, five or eight. That's not two. Um, five is in one of those two squares. Have I actually done all of the, all of the stuff I meant to have done? Well, I sort of have, haven't I? I haven't resolved the ordering down at the bottom. Okay, let's look at this column. Two, three, and five. So this is three or five. That gives me a three, five pair in that row. That's two, three, or five. We could get a three in the corner here. Um, and we've got to put in seven, nine, and six, right. So this, oh, I see, it's just as simple as asking where six goes in row three. And then that's nine, that's nine, that's seven. So this is one. So this is nine, this is one. Now that square's got to be a five or an eight, which I see that partners up with this one. Um, did, did that do, <laughs> did that do more damage? Hopefully it did stuff, although maybe not quite enough stuff. What about, Maybe this box. Let's have a look down here. Three, five, seven, and oh, this is a three, five pair, which is resolved. That's lovely. Okay, three, five, eight, seven. So seven goes here by Sudoku. This is a five because the only place for six in the column is here. 
Now this is five, this is two, this is three. Oh no, we didn't get one. Sorry. This this just didn't didn't work in our favour. Five, eight, three, eight, five. Hopefully something at the bottom is going to unwind now because otherwise we're in trouble. Two, six, oh, six, one, one, nine, nine, four, four, seven. What a brilliant puzzle that is. Let's click tick. Yay. <laughs> Loved it. Um, that was just beautiful, wasn't it? A seriously unusual logic start to finish. I I, I'm pleased that I spotted that those four had to be different. I'm even quite proud I spotted that all the white dots have to be given different. I'm absolutely appalled that I couldn't work out in my head that there were 10 green pairs and because I think that would have, I, I don't know quite how it would have helped at the start but I'm sure it would have helped a bit. Wow that's very impressive Vidorino and a really really cool debut. Um, let me know in the comments if you had a go, especially if it was the first time you've tried a variant Sudoku and especially if you got it done. That's always very pleasing to hear um, and I enjoy the comments, especially if they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.